section 6.1 from chapter 6, Law of Science. So now what we're looking at is some applications of trigonometric functions. Usually, we're going to use them in physics applications. So some of this stuff you should have seen before in an introductory physics class, but we're going to go over it again and have some further application than you saw before. So first we're looking at the law of science, which is a formula you've seen. So we're going to kind of gloss over the basic applications of it. Of course, you set up these ratios and then make a proportion by setting them equal. But something happens when there are certain conditions present. And that's something that happens we call the ambiguous case. So what can happen is if we're given an acute angle that is unincluded from the two sides we were also given. So law of sides, you need two sides in an angle or two angles in a side. But if you have this configuration, an acute, unincluded angle of the two sides you're given. Furthermore, the angle that you're given, the letter corresponds with the side, so they're opposite each other. And that side opposite is less than the side adjacent to the angle. What can happen in that situation is that that side, lowercase a, can be here or it can swing around and still meet up with this side. So it kind of swings down, imagine like a pendulum swinging. We could have said a or it could swing over and over and meet up with this side again. So it's ambiguous. There's more than one possibility. It's unclear which one it is. It could be here, or side A could swing over and be here. So there's two cases that we got to look at. So we're going to walk through how you solve for those two cases. So the example we're looking at, let's get a picture to model it. So maybe let me get a little more room. There we go. So we have triangle ABC. So we'll do something like this. So A, B, and C. So we have little a, we have little c, we have little b. So the angles are the uppercase letters, the sides are the lowercase letters. So we know angle a is 20.5 degrees. Side a, little a, is 12 meters and we also know side B so little b that is 31 meters so to solve for this triangle we'll just set up a law of sines proportion so we have big A and little a we have little b so the first thing we could find is big B, so the angle measure of B. So we'll set up that proportion first. So little a over sine of big A equaling little b over sine of big B. So with that proportion, we'll then go and fill in everything we need. So little a is 12, 
sine of big A, so sine of 20.5. And I'm going to try to not round as it goes through the problem. Try to keep exact values so my final answer is as accurate as possible. So little b, 31. Trying to find the big B. So that would be our variable. And then to solve a proportion, of course you saw this in geometry, you want to cross multiply. So we have 31 times sine of 20.5. And that's equaling 12 times the sine of B. So now, much like we saw in chapter 5, we want to solve with this angle, so we get to get the sine by itself, and then use an inverse to get b by itself. So we want to divide both sides by 12. So 31 times sine of 20.5 all over 12 equals the sine of b. And then to find the measure of angle b for good, we're going to take the inverse sine of both sides. So sine inverse of this big mess. So the 31 sine of 20.5 all over 12 equals the measure of angle B. So you set that equation up, and then you plug it all into a calculator. Make sure the calculator is into green mode. Be careful how you type it in. Make sure you have the numerator and denominator in their own set of parentheses. Again, the calculator is very stupid. It does exactly what you tell it to. It does not know anything about context. So you need to provide the context. Make sure you use parentheses, top and bottom. The parentheses don't always matter. You don't always need them. But when you do need them, you should have them. So I think just use them all the time. So you plug that in and you round to three decimal places, you get Uh, 64 point would I have 783 yeah I'm definitely not doing this in my head I have no I'm looking at so measure angle B is 64.783 angle A is 20.5 do find the measure of angle C of course triangle some theorem all the angles add up to 180, so we know two of them, subtract those from 180. To get the measure of angle C, so 180 degrees minus 20.5 degrees minus 64.783 degrees. And you get, what do I have? Again, it's just looking in my nose. I'm not doing all this in my head. So you get 94.717 degrees. So now we know angle B, we know angle C, we know little a, little b, angle A, let's find little c. Let's use this value we got for angle C. So set of our proportion, we could do B over sine of B equals C over sine of C. If we did that though, 
we'd be using a value we found, that value could be wrong. So let's go ahead and use as much information as we can that we were given. So little a over Santa Fe, use the values we were given versus values we found. Because what if the values we found were wrong? So plug in what we know, 12 over the sine of 20.5 equals little c, which we don't know, over the sine of 94.717. So go ahead, cross multiply. And then divide by the sign of 20.5. So when you do that math, C ends up being about what we have 34.149. And we are given meters, so let's put that unit in there. So finding everything that's unknown based upon the what we're given and the law of signs. But here's the thing. Remember, inverse sign. If you remember from chapter four, it comes from quadrant one and quadrant four. So the calculator, what it will do is there are two possibilities, right? Let me scroll up just a little. There could be this triangle, which I have drawn. So then this angle is acute. But there's also the possibility of this triangle, where the angle is obtuse. Now the calculator will do inverse sine. Inverse sine that it can have two answers, an acute and an obtuse. But because inverse sine comes from the first and fourth quadrants, inverse sine will give you the acute angle from the calculator. It will just report that one. It won't give you the obtuse as well. So that is part of the reason for this ambiguous case and these calculations we're going to do. The calculator will only give you the acute measure, like we have here. To find the obtuse, we're going to have to kind of manually go and find that. So let me scroll back down. So this is all right here. Case one. There's also the possibility of case two. And case two is that angle B is obtuse. So triangle ABC. A, B, C, and little b is still 31, angle A is 20.5, little a is 12 meters. So it's possible what we had Now what we had was this little a right here. If little a swings back and it swings to the left right there, now it's possible angle b is obtuse, not acute. Well, 
Oh no, I still want that. The help with our calculations. So this was about 64.783. Here's the thing about this triangle. This triangle with A of 12 and this hypothetical A is also 12. You should know from geometry that triangle right here is isosceles, two congruent legs. So with this angle is 64.783, this angle is also 64.783. So to find our obtuse angle B, We essentially want to find the supplement for this. So altogether, they're a linear pair. They would be 180. But subtracting this acute angle out, subtracting 64.783, will give us about 115. Point two one seven degrees. So subtracting what we got from 180. There's another way to find that angle where you work with the complement. So you take what you have, you find the complement. So what added to this would give you 90 and you add that twice. I believe I have that in my notes online. Either way, you should get to this angle measure. Once we know our new obtuse angle B, you can use triangle sum theorem to find angle C, and then do one more law of sines calculation to find side C. So you can pause the video, finish that, and then check your answer with my completed notes online. And then one more thing to look at in this section, another trigonometric application, is a more trigonometric formula to find area of a triangle. So you know and love the triangle formula. Area is one half base times height. You've always known that or used that. So now we have sine, cosine, tangent. So we have more options for finding area of a triangle. So two examples here of an acute or maybe a right triangle with the height inside the triangle, here an obtuse with the height outside the triangle. Either way, you could use this formula. So in both of these cases, I'll use green. Haven't used it yet, why not? In both of these cases, our base is the side C. Because C is perpendicular to our height. Remember, base and height always got to be perpendicular to each other. To find our height, in both of these triangles, the height going vertically is equal to, well, not equal to, but you can write in the equation that involves the height in both triangles. If you look at only this right triangle right here, sine of A equals opposite over hypotenuse, H over B. If you look at this triangle right here, I really didn't follow the lines. We're gonna try and trace this again.
better. So sine of angle A in this right triangle is also opposite of our partners H over B. So if we solve this, multiply the B over B times sine of A equals H. So our base is C, our height is B times sine of A, put that all together, you have one half B C times sine of angle A. Now all of these letters are different. Big A, little B, little C. So, essentially, kind of look for this configuration. If you have two sides of a triangle, and then the angle in between them. So, in both of these cases up here, if you know two sides of a triangle, and the angle in between them, two sides of a triangle, right there, and the angle in between them. So if you have that configuration of information, you can use this area formula.